and welcome to Bramwell Bad Room Brewery. Um, Christmas hat because it is actually December in the UK at the moment and it's very near Christmas but taking it off. Um, this has been set up for um, a live stream um, that I'm going to be doing with um, Shark Home, Home Brewing. So, you know, go and uh, give him a follow. Um, but basically, the idea here is my setup for home brewing. Um, I do it all on the stove, so it's stove top brewing. So, when I first got into stove top brewing, I got a couple of books which would uh, have small recipes, gallon recipes really, or five litres in, in the UK, I go for. So, I went on the internet and I found the Brooklyn Brew Shops beer making book. Really good. It's in American um, units though, so. That to translate, sorry, yeah, yeah, translate that for the for the for the English yeah, pounds and uh, grams, um, sorry, grams, and then I got the second book, and this has got you know various recipes in here, some funky stuff as well, um, smoked porters, uh, what else is there? Chamomile blonde beer, but there's also another book uh, which I have on my Kindle, and this let's get to log on to here, should have been prepared really, shouldn't I? So, if I go to my Kindle, just bear with me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> in this book, I'd recommend to anyone in the UK who's getting in, who wants to get into small batch brewing, uh, like, 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 like I do. Um, and this one <clears throat> is Brew Better Beer by Emma Christensen. So, Brew Better Beer by Emma Christensen. Have a look, it's on Kindle, you can buy in hardback. So, it's definitely worth it's got recipes in there for small gallon batches or five gallon batches. Really good book, lots of different recipes. Definitely, you know, go and grab a copy. So, yep, yeah, started off reading loads of books. My first ever brew was a kit brew by Festival. It was a golden stag and a pale ale. Um, it was okay, but once I did it, I thought, I want to get more involved in natural brew and what's going into it. So I jumped straight into all grain, straight in. And I thought, right, I'm going to do it on the stove. Keep it simple. If I don't like what I'm brewing, it's not a lot to throw away. And it's not really that expensive. So obviously it built up, you know, over the time. Started in a little pan on the stove and then progressed. This actual book here, the beer making book, tells you how to do all that. It's really good. It's how to, you know, which, what equipment you need. Got there. You know, images in there, cappers, bottles, what you need there for bottling, how you do it in the kitchen, basic kits. Yeah. But so then <clears throat> I moved over to the pan. And this is the pan I use. So I've got a 17 litre pan. This one's got a, a tap on it. But that's straight on my stove. Brilliant pan. Really it works well for me. There's my pipe in there as well. Cheap. This tap when I'm on print with that good pan for cooling. So so I've weighed the grain out, put my grain into this bag. It's like a brew in a bag then system, or like a big tea bag. So all my grains go into this. Get my mash water up to temp. This goes in there with the grain for an hour, or depending on how long it's got to go in there for. Take out the grains, bring that to the boil, add the hops, let it boil, and then I transfer it into this pan, which will be sanitized, boiling water put through. With this mesh bag, clean it out, add some star sand, shake it up, transfer the wort into this pan, and then this pan, put the lid off, goes into my sink, tap water, frozen bottles, get it down to temperature for fermentation. So once that's down to the temp, I use this, this is a different bag, another bag. And what I do, put that on a funnel. Funnel sits on top of a demijohn into the demijohn. Got a temperature on it there. Beers, one of the works in there. Add my yeast, then put it away somewhere it's going to keep a consistent temperature best possible. Or I've got a couple of fridges as well, and in there you have. Heat and light, and you've got an ink bird. That's that'd be a separate separate video. Uh, so once it's fermented, sorry, I should have said that's grain. That's the grain. So that's a that's a kilo of grain. It's already been crushed. 
and that there's not much more to add to that um, obviously speciality malts but that's like a kilo that does my gallon batches <clears throat> so once I've gone from there it's packaging so when it's finished fermenting I bottle it using an auto siphon which I haven't got handy just give me one minute <clears throat> Sorry about that. So this is a cheap version of an auto siphon. It works really well. So that goes inside, you can imagine that goes inside your fermenting vessel. Automatically pump down, liquid comes out here. Into this, this is a bottling wand, so that connects onto here. And that drops into, you can imagine on the day, drops into the bottle. You push down, there's a little spring on here, spring, you push down, when it comes up to level, take it out, then you can cap your bottle. One thing I have missed out there, you can tell I'm doing this, is priming sugar. So before you even bottle, once you've got it out of this fermenter, into, I use a second one, into another fermenter, into another demijohn, you add priming sugar with a water mix. I will do a video separately about this, but just wanted to go through this equipment while I'm here. So then you can bottle it or IUD it as well. Little mini keg. So the idea of this, I've got CO2 gas, put it into this keg, purge it a few times, pull in this, beers in here, sit on CO2 for a week or two, and then can dispense on top with a tap. That's really good. So you've got a whole whole lot in there. I've also got a little device which I use that I can bottle from the keg as well. It's a little device. Again, that's another another video that's gone. Just show you this. This is the bench capper which I use to bottle. So I've got the flip top bottles. I've also got a standard bottle. Make sure you use brown bottles, that's what I will say. Don't use clear or green, it can scump the beer. And, and the, the sunlight, even supermarket lighting, that type of stuff, it's not good for the hops in the beer. Stick to brown bottles. Okay, and always make sure you have some sort of sanitation, well, sanitizer. So you always want to make sure everything's clean, oil, water, you know, my pan's boiling, make sure things are in there boiled so I can boil the bags and stuff. But sanitize, sanitize, sanitize. As soon as that works, it's boiled, and it's ready to go into fermenters, sanitize the fermenter, sanitize your bottles. Just keep, you know, use it like a, you can use this and spray stuff. You can get a five litre bottle full of this stuff and use it on the days when, you, when you, you, you're bottling or brewing. So really, that's just a, a quick show of, well, a very simple video of the way I brew. Stove top brewing. Don't think I'll ever progress into anything bigger. I really enjoy stove top brewing. Um, it gives me the opportunity to brew more because it obviously there's smaller amounts. Gives me the opportunity to experiment uh, different types of beers. I mean, just an example here, I do some sourdough baking. And this is my sourdough yeast, which I put into a beer just under a year ago. And uh, so far, I mean, this was last was was used in April. That's a sample of the yeast. Still now can be used. It's a bit like using the um, cuvee yeast. It's brilliant. So there's like my packaged beer sourdough version three of the sourdough there in the bottle. IPAs. kettle souring just lots of opportunities to do different types of beers so yeah that's it really so that's my simple setup using a stove top using a sink getting some beers okay cheers